What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbits Use Cars. You know, I generally have very good days. As a rule, I wake up, I love on Webster, I eat a Pop-Tart or Clean Eats meal prep. You know, I, I get ready and I make a good cup of coffee and just, you know, start my day, you know, scroll through my shop shirts, put one on, and, and just everything, my day. As a rule, we cut up and laugh and make money. That's what we do here at RUC, period. And we sell a few cars, too. But you just have one of those days. And, and, and this week has been, for lack of better words, a I mean, that's just the best way to sum it up. And it's just Tuesday. We film these on Tuesdays. So let me let me just take you through a play-by-play -play of what yesterday was like for me. Had a guy on the phone with me all weekend long. Man, I love that 55 Chevy. I've always wanted a 55 Chevy hardtop. Love it. Got one in stock. He said, man, that black and silver. I said, straight class. Man, I like them big wheels. Me too. Man, I like that car. You know, he said, is it this? Can you send me pictures of this? You got a run video? Bleep, 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 bleep. I'm just sending them to him. He's just in love. This dude is foaming out the mouth. He's so happy about this damn thing. Calls him back on Sunday. He said, I'm going to be there Monday morning. He's going four hours away. Sunday, I usually don't try to take care of business on Sunday, but... You know, took his call, said, we'll be there Sunday. He's so excited, and I love guys like that. Heck, I go to bed Sunday night thinking, shoot, Monday morning. Probably a pretty good chance this old girl's going to be going down the road. You know, good way to kick the week off. So I got up, just like I was telling you before, and had me a nice cookies and cream pop tart. Webster had a little too. We chilled out, made me a cup of coffee. Didn't even touch my phone. When the bathroom shaved my face, took a shower, boom, red rock. Take my old phone off the charger. Look, three missed calls from my mother. And I don't talk to her, you know, as much. You know, I don't talk to her every day or anything like that. And I opened my phone, and I got a bunch of texts on there, which I always do. And I opened it up, and it said, your father was just admitted into the hospital. And my day dropped like a rock from there. You know, just talked to my dad Sunday. And he seemed fine. So I call my mom up, finally get her on the phone. And I'm standing there. And he's like, your, your dad's got pneumonia and he's in the hospital. My dad's got a lot of underlying health problems too. But pneumonia is not a good one to throw on top of any of that. So naturally, I'm worried. And she said, well, he's been wheezing and coughing all weekend. And I'm like, damn it. Why didn't we take him to the damn doctor? We're going to wait till he turns f***ing blue. You know, whatever. You know, I mean, I'm just fed up, aggravated. Make sure he's all right. Keep me in the loop. Well, keep in mind, he's running the truck shop. So guess who's running the truck shop while he's in the hospital? Me. So I bust ass over here and I run to the truck shop. Take care of that. Well, I got an old dude coming. Look at this car. So I get here, I get the boys rocking and rolling at the truck shop. Yeah, have a little cum Jesus meeting right off the bat. Tell them everything about the old man and all this stuff. Hop in the Silverado, run over here to the warehouse. I get here about 10 minutes, and a little white Toyota Prius comes pulling up. Man gets out. He goes, man, where's your bathroom at? I said, right through those doors right there, bud, to the left. He walks out. And he looks at this 55 Chevrolet, which is a very nice car, by the way. I know in video, a lot of things look nice. This is nice. Walks right past it, and he goes, you can tell it's been built a while. I said, well, I told you it's been built about eight years. You know, the car's been driven, it's been enjoyed, but it's a nice car. It's aged extremely well. Rock solid California car. Bottom looks like the top. He kneels down, looks under the bottom of it. He goes, yeah, it ain't too bad on the bottom. I'm thinking to myself, you're driving a car that my sunglasses cost more than that did. And you're talking shit about my 55 Chevrolet. And keep in mind, my stress level's already 
Like, my don't give a f meter is already pegging at this point. And this is the thing. I'm going to stop there. I'm normally extremely cool, calm, and collective, especially when people are giving me money or I'm selling someone something. You know, you guys come with me at an event. I won't stand there. I won't talk to you. Hell, I want to know about it. You know, someone was talking to me about 55 Chevrolets and how they had one. You know, when I was a kid, a neighbor had one, or they had one, or wife took it, whatever. I listen to those stories all day long. That's my job. It's part of sales. This guy's just talking shit about my car. Ralph Bat, here I am. You know, and the thing is, if I was trying to sell him a piece of shit, I'd understand it. But I'm not. He's just trying to knock me down. I've been down this road before. So a man walked around. He goes, you're asking a pretty, pretty fair amount for this thing. I said, no, I'm asking what it's worth. What would your bottom dollar be? And I hate that. I hate that. What is your bottom dollar? And like I said, I'm sitting there trying to hold it together. Trying to hold it together. Phones buzzing in my back pocket. Truck shops going ape shit. And I'm listening to this guy pull a bottom feeder line on me. What is your bottom dollar? And like I said, I'm normally cool, calm, collective, and I turn that right around and say, well, listen, bud, you know, make me an offer on it. And I'll listen. I ain't got to take it. You know, or, uh, you know, what, what do you think? You know, what do you think is a fair price for this car? Or this or that or whatever. Can't do that. Just, just not in the mood for bullshit. You know, sometimes it you know, kind of takes you back to when I was at the Ford store and the guy was wanting to buy, you know, was buying the Ford Fusion and he told his wife, you know, his wife could buy a Kia for half price. You got to go to that Hail Mary move. Like I said, it's either 50 50. Either they're going to take it or they're not. Well, I'm going to fill in a little secret. He didn't take it. Basically, I told this man, you don't have enough fucking money to buy this son of a bitch. It's not for sale. Well, what do you mean? I said, not to you. Beat it. And I walked him out of the building. And that was a little rude. I was a little crass. But I walked him out of the building. Don't hurt my feelings a bit to have 55 hardtop with big wheels all sitting here. Puts joy in my heart just walking here seeing it. Because I'll be honest with you, at the end of the day, from as high as you can go to as low as you can dig, this is me, Daddy. I got it. The end. Cuss out meter for keeping score. We're at number one. <sighs> go on from there, go to the truck shop. And you know, keep in mind, I don't run the truck shop daily, daily anymore. You know, I come in, I, can't, I hit the high points. So I'm getting every call, and this, and this, and this, and this, and it's driving me nuts. And I mean, we're, we're just not like at lunch. You know, worried about my dad and, you know, all this stuff and trying to, you know, hold the fort down, keep everybody together and keep everybody from worrying. And I'm worried to death myself. You know, me and my dad are really tight, you know, and I've told several stories about it. And I joke around all the time about me and my dad. And we, you know, it makes me laugh. It's like I, somebody was talking to me and he goes, you know, man, your dad, you know, he's something else. I said, yeah, he's an asshole, but he's like my asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't take all the money in the world for him, but I wouldn't give a nickel for another one just like him. But, you know, so I'm worried about him, you know, and he's an hour away. It's not like he's in the hospital down the street and because of all the bullshit with COVID, you're going to let one person in at a time and yada, yada, yada. Finally get through that. Said, you know what? Transporter calls. Hey, you know, there's two 3,100 trucks. I bought, I got transporters coming in at 10 o'clock tonight to get them. Ah! I'm not waiting till 10 o'clock at night for any damn body. Trucks are paid for. They'll be here in the morning. He needs to get a hotel room. I'm not loading trucks in the dark. I'm not standing around here till 10 o'clock at night waiting on a damn transporter. The end. So transporter shows up the next morning. Well, you know, think about these two trucks. We haven't fired them up or anything. They've been sitting over here in kind of dead stock. Waiting. So naturally, batteries die and all that. Well, what do we do? Well, we need to do it. Well, one of the trucks, batteries under the hood. Wasn't on the charger for 15 minutes, fired right up like a man on the clock. Well, the other truck, the little LS powered one. So, battery wouldn't take a charge. I need to buy a battery for it. It's part of the business here. Ring up the local O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's literally five minutes down the road. They had me a battery out here. Well, there's only one damn problem. They put the battery in such a bastard place on this truck, it was under the bed with no escape door. We had to drop the exhaust down. We had to drop drive shaft out of it. 
and the battery was like still way up high. Like you had to put the cables kind of in in the dark. Jack this thing up, up under it. I mean, and then of course, I'm sitting here nuts deep in this truck, trying to swap the battery out, cussing and mad. And it fighting me every step of the way. And then Kobe walks in. I turn around and tell Kobe, Kobe, this is not the time to speak to me. And Kobe knows me good enough that he's and right out the door. See ya. Battery acid running down my damn arm because the battery's leaking. Brand new battery leaking down my damn arm. So that just pisses me off. You know, just, just one of those days. And then you go home and I be damned the guy that I cussed out about this car. Calls me back. <laughs> Round two. It didn't go. It didn't go as good as round one did. I just told him, I said, listen, bud, it's not going to happen. If you paid me asking price, I probably wouldn't sell it to you. So anyway, and that, that's been my day in a nutshell. I, I feel better because I talked about it. I do. I truly feel better. And just, you know, I want to ask everybody to say a little prayer for old Rabbit's dad. I'm kind of, I'm a little worried about him still. He's still in the hospital and, and he's, Doing okay. I ain't gonna say better. He's doing okay. But anyway, guys, I guess we'll catch you next time at Rabbit Shoes Cars unless I cuss everybody out. Matt, you want your turn now? I'm leaving, dude. I'll catch you later. Ah, f you. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit Shoes Cars. Just so everybody knows, he's cleaning his glasses to get on top of his head. I am. I am cleaning my glasses to go on top of my head. Do you know why? Because these glasses cost more than that Mercedes over there. That's why. I didn't believe that. You know, it's kind of like a whatever. Take my old phone off the charger. Look, I got three missed calls from my mother. And now my phone starts ringing. I hear you. You know them 23100 trucks that we sold the other way? Or sold the other way? Hey, we need to come pay. Are you bought? We bought the other. You know there's two. Man, just coming in from outside doing some old yard work.